In 1662, the Kingdom of France was led by a king named Louis who was arbitrary and dictatorial, he liked playing with women and led his people badly. At that time the French Empire was at war with the Netherlands and caused the French people to starve, King Louis sent his musketeers to fight the Dutch. Why should my people feel anything but- No, no, do not underestimate the Dutch. Musketeer was the name for the royal army, among them there were four musketeers who had become legends because of their abilities and services to the kingdom, the four of them were now retired and living their own lives. They were D'Artagnan who was still a musketeer and was the highest leader, he was loyal to the kingdom and loyal to King Louis. Second, there was Aramis who was now a pastor and spent a lot of time praying every day, the third was Porthos, he liked to tease women and was always seen with them, but apart from that, Porthos also always complained about his life. Can't you listen to their song? Finally there was Athos who was already married, but his wife died while giving birth to his son, Raoul, who was now an adult. Raoul followed in his father's footsteps to become a musketeer and having served on the front lines during the war, he seemed to be close to a woman named Christine and intended to propose to her. The famine that hit the people made them start making commotion in the city and made them hate King Louis who did not care about his people at all. One day, King Louis ordered D'Artagnan to summon Aramis to the palace, Aramis then came to see King Louis who was having a party at that time. King Louis personally ordered Aramis to track down the leader of the Jesuits and kill him, the royal party apparently thought that the Jesuits had slandered and were hostile to the kingdom, and Aramis who was a former great musketeer complied with the order. When I discovered the identity of this Jesuit. At the party, Raoul arrived with Christine. When the party started to wind down, he proposed and Christine accepted happily, she was seen by King Louis and it seemed the king was attracted to Christine's beauty. On the sidelines of the party, King Louis made a contest to separate Christine and the other guests, he finally managed to be alone with Christine and seduced her, but Christine admitted that she already loved another man, which was Raoul. I understand that you're not accustomed to these surroundings. Very, very kind. Hearing this, King Louis ordered Raoul to return to the battlefield and occupy the front lines. He knew that King Louis' goal was to get rid of him so King Louis could get Christine. A sad Raoul reported this to Athos who was immediately angry to hear that. Even so, Raoul decided to obey the king's orders and went to war. When the battle took place, Raoul who fought bravely died because he was hit by a cannon shot. News of his death then reached Christine and Athos who were immediately devastated to hear it. The next day, Athos came to the palace and was about to kill King Louis, but the musketeer stopped him. Athos who was very angry did not care and intended to fight them all, but D'Artagnan came and stopped him. D'Artagnan persuaded him, Athos finally returned home, but he did not like D'Artagnan who always defended King Louis. You're the traitor. D'Artagnan had the principle that even though King Louis lead badly, he always prayed that his king could become a good king. One day, Aramis gathered Porthos, D'Artagnan and Athos in his place. There, Aramis confessed that King Louis ordered him to kill the leader of the Jesuits, but in fact it was himself, he then invited his three colleagues to revolutionize and replace King Louis. Hearing that, D'Artagnan was very surprised, he who was very loyal to King Louis immediately refused. Meanwhile, Athos who really hated King Louis for causing the death of his son immediately agreed with whatever Aramis's plan was, Porthos also immediately agreed. D'Artagnan then left and took a different side to his colleagues, Athos said when they meet again, then one of them would die. Next time we meet, one of us will die. Aramis' plan apparently was to carry out a clandestine revolution, he planned to replace King Louis with someone else. In the royal prison where the criminals were held, there was a prisoner wearing an iron mask named Philippe, he planned to free him and make him the successor of King Louis. Aramis who was accompanied by his colleagues disguised himself as a priest who came to the prison to accompany prisoners during the confession, that day it was Philippe's turn to meet the priest. Aramis then pretended to be a fat person, but actually he was holding the body of a teenage boy wearing an iron mask. Philippe was surprised to see him, but Aramis explained a plan to free him then and there. He put down the body of the metal masked teenager and carried Philippe on his stomach, he then tricked the prison guard that the prisoner had suddenly died of a plague. Thus, Aramis and his friends managed to get to Philippe safely. Meanwhile, King Louis and Queen Anne assumed that Philippe was really dead. Aramis then took him to a house in the countryside which became their headquarters. There, 
Philippe's iron mask was removed and his hair and beard were cleaned. When Philippe was alone with Athos, he looked very confused and it turned out he didn't understand why he had to be imprisoned while wearing that iron mask. Athos asked what Philippe remembered, and Philippe answered that he remembered living in the village with some people. One day, someone came to take him and he was immediately sent to prison, then he was put on the iron mask. After cleaning, it turned out that his face looked very similar to King Louis. Shortly after that, Aramis, Athos and Porthos gathered together Philippe. Aramis explained that when Queen Anne gave birth, she actually gave birth to twins, the previous king who saw them realized that he had two heirs. Because he wanted to save his son from a dispute over the throne, the king then ordered to keep it a secret and told Aramis to send his youngest son, Philippe, to a village. While the eldest son who was none other than Louis, was designated as the heir. Queen Anne and Louis then lived without knowing the whereabouts of Philippe. The previous king kept the secret until one day before his death, the previous king told Queen Anne and Louis about Philippe. Queen Anne was devastated and felt guilty because all this time she had never known the whereabouts of Philippe, she wanted to restore Philippe's rights, but it was Louis who had ascended the throne ordered Aramis to arrest Philippe in the countryside and imprison him. In other words, Philippe was Louis' twin brother and he also had the right to be the heir to the kingdom. After telling that, Aramis asked Philippe if he would join their plan to pretend to be King Louis, but Philippe did not answer immediately and instead ran away scared. They then gave Philippe some time to think about it. I've been in prison for six years. Philippe pondered the plan, and admitted that he had no real reason for doing it. When he was confused, Aramis, Porthos and Athos came. After hearing Athos' honest words, Philippe agreed. We all did a bad for our men. And the only one who can answer that question. Aramis previously asked Athos to train Philippe all the things he needed to know so he could impersonate King Louis, Athos admitted that it took a long time, but Aramis asked him to teach Philippe many things in just three weeks. After that, Philippe spent his days practicing martial arts, horse riding, and other things. It is so. Servants have touched the goblet. The king cares for nothing and for no one. Aramis already had a plan to exchange Philippe with King Louis which was when the masquerade ball would be held soon. Their plan was progressing smoothly, but suddenly Aramis heard that his masquerade ball would be held ahead of schedule because King Louis was dissatisfied with his concubine. The concubine in question was Christine who used to date Raoul, son of Athos. Before long, the masquerade ball really got underway sooner. Aramis, Porthos and Athos brought Philippe to the palace disguised as party guests. My brother. When King Louis danced, they showed the iron mask he was wearing and made King Louis uncomfortable. King Louis returned to his room while a worried D'Artagnan stood guard in front of his room. At that time, Aramis, Porthos and Athos brought Philippe into King Louis' room through a secret passage, they then smothered King Louis and exchanged his clothes with Philippe. Don't look so shocked, Philippe. Since D'Artagnan was still on guard, they escorted Philippe to the ballroom via a secret passage. There, Philippe who looked like King Louis, was not the least bit suspicious. Continue. As the party progressed, Queen Anne came and approached Philippe with a look full of affection. She knew that it was Philippe, her youngest child who had been taken from her. Apparently she knew it from Aramis who told her the plan. The party continued, and D'Artagnan finally realized that King Louis had returned to the ballroom. He felt a little suspicious of King Louis, and his suspicions increased when he saw King Louis being too polite and acting uncharacteristically. He then ordered his men to surround all the exits. The musketeers got all the passages. Aramis, Porthos and Athos took the real King Louis to flee the palace, but they were intercepted by the musketeers and trapped by them. Shortly thereafter, D'Artagnan came with Philippe and said that the one beside him was the fake King Louis, while Athos held King Louis hostage and asked D'Artagnan to release them and Philippe. When they were about to leave, D'Artagnan also pointed his sword at Philippe, and finally Athos handed over King Louis to save Philippe. They were about to run away, but King Louis who was angry ordered the musketeers to arrest Philippe, and Philippe was caught. King Louis then took Philippe to his bedroom and looked at him with angry eyes. D'Artagnan was with them at the time and was surprised when King Louis said the imposter was his younger brother. Shortly thereafter, Queen Anne came and hugged Philippe. King Louis became even more angry and accused Queen Anne of also being involved in Aramis' plan to get rid of him. Queen Anne then denied and asked King Louis to forgive Philippe because they were relatives, she also also said that she loved Kings Louis and Philippe equally. Hearing that, D'Artagnan begged King Louis to forgive Philippe, 
but King Louis ordered him to be detained again in prison. After that, King Louis ordered D'Artagnan to hunt Aramis, Porthos, and Athos. The musketeers chased them in the city, but the three of them managed to escape to Aramis' place. There, there was a note left by D'Artagnan, it said he joined Aramis' plan and told the right time to release Philippe, Athos suspected it was a trap, but even so, they had no choice but to give it a try. Before long they had infiltrated the prison and taken away Philippe who had been fitted with an iron mask, D'Artagnan then came to help them escape from the musketeers, but King Louis, who had suspected that D'Artagnan was a traitor managed to trap them. At the time D'Artagnan said that he loved Queen Anne, and the children she gave birth to were his children, he was apparently proud of Philippe's good nature and made D'Artagnan proud as a father. One for all. King Louis then ordered the musketeers to shoot them all, but the musketeers admired Aramis, Porthos, Athos and D'Artagnan who were legends, the musketeers did not shoot seriously. As a result, Aramis and his friends were still standing safely. After that King Louis tried to stab Philippe with a knife, but D'Artagnan stopped him so he was the one who was stabbed. At the time D'Artagnan mentioned that Philippe was the brother of King Louis, this made a musketeer understand the situation and ordered the other musketeers to come out and shut up. There, D'Artagnan died. There they then exchanged King Louis and Philippe, the real King Louis was finally fitted with an iron mask and put in the deepest prison. Philippe who was now King Louis, made Aramis, Porthos and Athos his advisors and good friends, he then led the kingdom of France well so that he was remembered as a wise king in the history of his kingdom. Meanwhile, the Iron Mask prisoner was reportedly given leniency by King Louis and lived happily in the countryside, Queen and then occasionally visited him.